what is up everybody so in today's video i bring you guys my domain monarch deck profile uh, for you guys that may or may not know or for you guys that have been here forever you guys know i was a big advocate of this deck back in 2016 i actually went to the 2016 nationals and i played the domain monarch deck and i did pretty well with it i almost made day two ended up scrubbing because it was one in the morning worst nationals ever if you guys want to see that video it's somewhere on the channel it's like four years old so essentially i wanted to bring you guys my take on the domain monarch deck profile i know a lot of players have probably already uploaded this list and a lot of lists are going to be very similar because to be honest with you the deck builds itself but it's those small differences with in between each deck list that differentiate them from player to player and i believe that's how you're going to improve on deck lists and etc moving forward for any deck you play so in this video i'm not just gonna only provide you the deck list you guys already know i'm gonna be showing you guys a couple of combos you can do with the deck and i'm gonna show you guys one test hand at the end of the video just to show you guys a good feel for my consistency and ratios so with all the being said let's get into it without further ado let's begin ice on my wrist looking kind of cool bad bitch with me she ain't trying to move Niggas staring at me, what you trying to do? Got me looking at my watch, and it's time to do. We're going to start off with the, mo the monsters first. Um, Building this deck, right? I honestly did not know that Ether was back at three, because your boy don't really pay attention to the ban list. But yeah, Ether's back at three, and I'm pretty happy. I didn't realize it was back at three, so I played against this deck on Dueling Book during one of my live streams. I'm like, man, Ether's at three? Okay. I thought, I thought it was recent, but apparently it came off at three a while. You play three after no exception. This is literally the best card in the deck. I know a lot of deck profiles that like to highlight um, Erebus because he's a hand ripper. But Ether literally makes the deck. There's a reason why Konami limited this, this card back to one a couple of years ago. Because literally it's easily to control the opponent. Because you trip it out and interrupt your opponent plays with Ether and Karaz or Ether and Erebus. Like, there's this nutty plays you can do with this card. Two Erebus, just like back in the day. Back in the day, a lot of people did not max out on Erebus. They ran two. Some people even ran one. And the reason being because this deck does have a bricking problem, which is why they used to say you're building a brick house. But during the same time frame, this literally was the best deck in the format. Like literally, either you're playing Domain Monarchs with the inconsistencies it had, or you're playing something to stop Domain Monarchs. So National 2016 was just all monarch versus monarch and this is before the time rules and this is probably honestly the reason why konami implemented the time rules because day one ended at like two in the morning which was insane Yu-Gi-Oh history i'm glad i was there for it um three ash blossom as my hand traps um this card is really good at locking over 70 cards out just by stopping the effects i could have opted for effect veiler you can pick and choose how you want to go about it I did get a little bit of criticism on my hero deck list for not maining Ash Blossom. I believe heroes can play through back row and play through things like that, which is why I don't main it and or need it. But in this deck, it kind of is fragile to an extent, but once it goes off, it wins. And I think having every little negate matters in this deck, which is why I'm running three Ash Blossoms. Two Majesty's Fane, best card in the deck. This is literally Destiny Hero Plasma. It's a skill drain on legs. Nothing more to be said about that. Um, you're probably going to see a lot of people running... Um, the other Fiend card as well, Vanity's Fiend, that card is good as well, but the reason why you run Majesty's Fiend is because Majesty's Fiend meets the requirements for all the Monarch cards because he has 2400 attack and 1000 defense. Vanity's Fiend on the other hand, the ratios are a little off, which is why you would run Vanity's Fiend in the side deck for this deck versus running it in the main deck, in my personal opinion. Two Karaz. Now, this was always a mix up back in the day with people on how they ratio Karaz. I always ran two because I found myself always utilizing two, especially when we had things like um, that Black Wing monster that created tokens. Um, but Karaz is just like, essentially your opponent interruption. So, let's say they try to combo off, they do some combo pieces on the board. You can, um, during your opponent's um, turn, bring out Ether, bring out Karaz, pop their cards. Really simple and straightforward. Now for the little dudes, we got three Ideas, two Eidos, and one Mithra the Thunder Vassal. Mithra the Thunder Vassal is pretty good because it allows you to do sweet combos like hitting your opponent with double um, Erebus on first turn, which is pretty cool. That's pretty much the only reason you run them, just to rip two cards out of your opponent's hand. Back in the day, people also was running um, the Thestalos, the Fire Mega Monarch. That's another option as well. 
I'm opting for two Erebus because even though it's a random card out of your opponent's hand, it's still a good card. It's still a card out of your opponent's hand, which is really good. And yeah, card is insane. Spells and traps. Three domain. This is the reason why the deck is good. Domain and the monarchs. Lock the opponent out. Nothing more to be said, honestly. Um, just you run three because you if your opponent MST, they copy and cyclone it. Um, Feather Dust right now, you're going to want to have another copy. Two returns. Back in the day, this ran as ratios between two and one. I like two because I do want to see this card a lot, but I found running three at bricks. Running two is okay because when you open it up, you can extend your combos out, which is really good. Three Pantheism, consistency card. Arguably the best card in the deck. This is arguably the reason why you're going to see an influx of modern decks moving forward because it can, some of the consistency is back. Even though the deck was always rated a brick house type of deck, the people who played the deck back in the day, we all agree that the deck is it bricks, but when it opens up somewhat decent and good, you're good to go. Um, three tenacity staple is your searcher. Three monarch storm four. You gotta run three, no exceptions. Because if you do go second, you can trip off your opponent's monsters, which is good. And since this is the domain build, you want to go first. There are some other quirky builds that you can play that runs an extra deck that goes second. But I think the best build right now is going to be the, the extra deck locking because of every deck using Christron, Hackofax, combos, and things like that. You definitely want to just focus on locking out the extra deck because you're just going to win. Foolish Burial, one for one. Monster Monarchs, this card is really good as well. It was all used to, used to be a side deck for most people. I'm main decking it because why not? Um... The game is a different game from when it was years ago, and while you got your tribute from a monster, you can't be talking about card effects. And yeah, that's really good, honestly. So you can't they can't regack you, they can't luck sack you with a lightning storm. Really solid card. Three lower darkness for, mainly for consistency, no exception. And the traps in the runner deck is two prime of the monarch. So this is pretty much my deck in general. I do not have a side deck yet, which is why you guys are not seeing one. But it probably will be similar to my hero side deck. If you want to see my hero side deck, go check out my hero video. So stay tuned for the combo portion of this video, guys. And I'm going to see you guys in the next clip. All right, guys. So for the first combo, I'm going to show you guys more of a gameplay style in the combo. After her reviewing what I'm seeing on this video, I'm like, okay, the deck has combos. They're very simple. So, but for you guys that never played a deck, essentially you go return, you play it your idea, you grab your... Edos to give you the extra normal summon. You can tribute both for your um, Erebus, channeling one, channeling two. Um, activate your return. You're gonna grab your Where's that? Ether. You can activate your um, Erebus effect. You're gonna send, of course, always send Prime Arc. You always wanna send Prime Arc, no exceptions. So you wanna send Prime. And you wanna send Pantheism. And then you can banish Pantheism. Reveal three Monarch Stormforth. And then from there, you can set a Stormforth and whatever your opponent does. And on the at the end of their turn, you can um, activate Stormforth on their turn and you contribute their monster and your Erebus to trigger your Ether. And then you can dump with Ether, which is filling your graveyard. And you're also triggering your Return of the Monarchs, which will allow you to search out your Majesty's Fiend, which is pretty cool. So this is one little simple play that can show you like how amazing and explosive the deck can be because tripping your opponent's monsters is pretty annoying. All right, guys, for the last combo I'm going to show in this video, I'm going to do a quick little cool combo you guys can do with a hand of Mithra, Thunder Vassal, Karaz, the Light Monarch, and the Return of the Monarchs. Pretty straightforward combo. You play your return. You activate your Mithra's effect to special summon to your um, hand from the field. Um, give your opponent the token. You're going to tribute summon for your Karaz, right? Tribute summon his effect to kick in since you tribute summon him for the turn you, you're allowed an additional tribute summon Karaz effect is going to kick in allowing you to pop a card to draw and then of course returns going to kick in so you're really going to place your hand essentially so chain link one chain link two resolve that, that um, return of the monarch first you're always going to want to grab your Erebus always well depending on what, what turn it is so let's say for example if you're trying to just combo off and just be dirty first turn you can grab your Erebus, rip a card at your opponent's hand, and yeah, you're pretty good from there. But if you don't want to do that, let's say you're going um, second, you can always grab your Majesty's Fiend. You can always grab, like, let's say, an Ether. But in this combo, we're going to go ahead and grab um, Erebus. Of course, you're going to resolve your Erebus, but 
remember when you pop with Karaz, you're going to draw a card. So not only are you searching out your Erebus, you're popping Return of the Monarchs with Karaz to draw a card. You're going to tribute off your um, Karaz for Erebus. And then you're just going to dump again, which is always going to be Pantheism and your Prime Monarch. And then from that way, you can set up a first turn of Banishing Pantheism, grabbing your Field Spell of Domain. And then you have a um, target for your um, prime monarch on the first turn, and you rip your, you're starting your opponent off with less one less card, which is really powerful and really useful in this deck. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and do from the actual test hand portion of the video. I'm actually pretty excited to see how good or bad I draw for this um, deck, and let's just see how good my ratio is. So we already shuffle, pile shuffle, things like that. Let's just see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, God almighty, this hand is broken. Okay. Now, me being a conservative player, I, I am. I'm probably not going to use my Lord Darkness until after I resolve everything else. So, we're going to go ahead and play Adia. Play Adia's effect. Grab Eidos. We're going to go ahead and play Erebus. Why not? You use your Erebus effect to rip a card out your opponent's hand by dumping. You're going to go ahead and dump Prime, Pantheism. Um, let's see. From there, we're definitely going to banish um, Prime on ours because we really don't need anything else, honestly. So, for the three that we're going to show our opponent... It's def most definitely, considering we don't have another monster hand, it would have been tenacity to search. But since we do have everything else, we're just going to go ahead and search out three Monarch Storm Fourth. We might confuse him and offer him a return. Um, more than likely, just playing a psychology tip, they're going to pick the um, return of the Monarchs because they don't want to get potentially Storm Fourth by an Ether on their turn. So this way you can actually kind of play with your opponent's head a little bit. Grab a return, play the march, play domain. I haven't shuffled my deck yet. We don't have a target for our prime monarch, but remember you can always use these guys on their next turn to get their effects off, which is always pretty cool. And so far, so good. We got march, return, domain. We have a lure darkness, so I'm gonna play a lure. Draw two. We didn't draw anything, but with that being said, we do have um, pretty decent setup. And with March, Domain, Return, I say we're pretty gravy. Let's just see what the next card might be. Oh, Karaz, and then we're just going to start our engine again. So tell me what you guys think about this um, deck list in the comment section down below. Like the video if you're new here and subscribe for more. It's your boy, Rogue Hero, and I'm signing out. The last deck profile I'm going to do this week is going to be Time Thief, so be on the lookout for that. Peace, guys, and stay in Deuces.